warmest of greetings to you. I am your storyteller, Chip, and you know the sun and the moon had always been the best of friends, but the sun was ready for something more. You see, the sun had fallen in love with the moon and thought it was about time they got married. <laughs> but the moon didn't feel quite the same. The moon did think that the sun was a good friend. She did think the sun was kind of hot, but she didn't love him enough to marry him. So she didn't want to say yes, but she didn't want to hurt his feelings either. And then an idea popped into her head for a way she could say no without actually saying no. The moon went to the sun and said, "I will marry you, on one condition. You bring me something to wear that fits me perfectly." Well, the sun thought this was brilliant. Finally, he was going to get to marry the love of his life. All he needed to do. Was get some clothes, some clothes that would fit her perfectly, and so he took her measurements and found that she was exactly size eight. She was exactly size eight. So maybe you can help us to remember that. Remember, she was exactly size eight. Eight. There we go. And then he went away to look for something for her to wear that would be exactly size eight. Eight. That's right. And he knew that. Women like the moon often like to wear dresses, and because the sun was a little bit of magic, he flew to his favorite planet, the planet Earth, looking for something he could transform into a dress that would be exactly size eight. eight. Thank you. It's a good job I've got you here. And he looked around the Earth, and he saw the trees, the trees in the forests of the Earth. So he began to wiggle his fingers over them, and you can do this as well if you like, ready to cast his magic spell. And his spell went like this: Change these trees, not a moment too late, into a dress that's exactly size eight. And in a flash, those trees were transformed into a dress that was exactly size eight. Eight, and the sun took that dress to the moon for her to try on, and the moon put on the dress, but it was a bit baggy. It was falling off her shoulders a little bit. The sun was a bit confused by this. He'd been absolutely sure that she was exactly size、um, eight. That's right. So he got his measuring tape again, and he took her measurements. And found that she was exactly size eight, nine, six. What? No, maybe, maybe he'd got it wrong that the the first time round. Because、uh, I mean, the, the number six does look a little bit like an eight, doesn't it? So maybe he had just got it all in a muddle. He needed to go and get something that was actually exactly size six. So we need to remember that now. We need to remember it's exactly size six. six. There we go. So off he went to get some clothes that were exactly size six. Eight, eight, six. Thank you. Exactly size six. And he knew as well that women often liked to wear skirts. So he thought this time he would find something that he could use to create a skirt. For the moon, a skirt that was exactly size six. six, and again he flew to his favourite planet, the planet Earth, looking around for something he could transform into a skirt of exactly size six, and he saw the golden sands of the desert. 
So flying over them, he began to wiggle his magical fingers, and again, yeah, you can do this as well if you like. And he began to cast a spell that went something like, Let these sands get me out of this fix by making a skirt that's exactly size... Six. Six. And just like that, the sands were transformed into a skirt that was exactly size... Six. Six. And he took it straight to the moon for her to try on. But when the moon put the skirt on, well, she, she had to hold it on. She couldn't let go because otherwise it would have fallen down. She had to hold on to this skirt. It obviously wasn't the right size for her. And the son was really confused. He'd been absolutely sure that she was a size six. six. So he got out his measuring tape and he measured her and it was size four, which made no sense at all. How could she be size four? I mean, okay, size six looked a little bit like eight. He could understand how he got that confused, but size four, the number four doesn't look like a six or an eight, does it? What was going on? Clearly he needed to find some clothes that would be exactly size Four. So we need to remember that this time. We need to remember size four. He wasn't going to forget. He was not going to forget that it was exactly size five. F uh, sorry, four. It was exactly size four. Back to the earth he went, searching around for something that he could transform into an item of clothing that was exactly size four. And he knew that women sometimes like to wear trousers. So he looked around for something that would make a wonderful pair of trousers that was exactly size four. four. And as he flew over the mountains, he noticed some diamonds, some sparkling diamonds. He thought they would make a perfect pair of trousers. So he began to wiggle his fingers, ready to cast another magic spell. And yep, you can do this as well if you like. And he cast a spell that went something along the lines of, with these diamonds, I need wait no more. Make some trousers exactly size four. Two? Yeah, Two? You can see where this is going, can't you? Well, the sun took those trousers that were exactly size four all the way to the moon. And when she tried them on, again, she was having to hold them up because they were far too baggy. And when the son took out his measuring tape, because he'd been sure she was exactly size four, he went and checked and she was exactly size two. two. She was size two. And the son was just absolutely confused. He was absolutely sure she had been size four. And as he turned and went away, he realized that this was just impossible. The son hadn't been able to find any clothes that fit her perfectly, which meant he wasn't going to get to marry the love of his life. He thought that it was gonna be impossible for him to find clothes that would fit her perfectly. He was never going to get that beautiful wedding day he had imagined for them both, with all of their friends coming to see them and a delicious, towering wedding cake for them to enjoy. And oh, he wouldn't get to see the moon wearing her beautiful wedding outfit, her beautiful wedding clothes and her wedding. But as he thought of what she would be wearing for the wedding, an idea popped into his head. He now knew exactly what he could get for the moon that would definitely, absolutely fit her perfectly. He went back to the earth and flew over the glistening blue sea. And he wiggled his magical fingers which you can do as well if you like, yeah, just like that. And he cast a magic spell that went like this. So there's a happy end to my tale. 
make these seas into a wedding veil. And in a flash, the seas were transformed into a beautiful blue wedding veil. And if you've ever seen a wedding veil, you will know that this is a kind of item of clothing that all you have to do is drape it over your head. It doesn't really matter how big it is, it just lays over your head and covers up your face. And when the sun brought this to the moon and she tried it on over her head, she realized it fit her perfectly. So now she did have to marry the sun. She couldn't get out of it now. And when the moon thought about it a bit more, she realized that actually she didn't mind marrying the sun because he clearly did love her very much if he had gone to such lengths to try and find something that did fit her perfectly. He had shown that he was really, really clever. And these were all the qualities that made her fall in love with him. And you know what? Sometimes when I tell stories like this, people ask me, is that story true? And with this particular story, you can go out and you can find proof that it's true. Because you see, the sun and the moon, ever since they were married, they've lived in the same part of space together. If you have a look up in the sky, you can see that the sun and the moon are both there. Don't look directly at the sun though, that can be very, very dangerous. The sun is very, very bright. Another thing that you might be able to see as proof that this story is true, is that the moon never took off the magic that had her changing shape. So if you look up at the moon at night, you will often see that she is changing her size every single night. But not only that, remember how the sun made that veil out of the sea? Well, the moon loved that veil so much she hardly ever takes it off. And as the moon moves around the earth, the veil drags the sea with her. And when you go down to the beach, you'll see that sometimes this means the sea moves away from you. And sometimes this means the sea moves towards you, depending on where the moon is in the sky. And because this has been going on for pretty much ever, I think we can say that the sun and moon lived very happily for the rest of their Life. lives. Thank you so much for sharing this story with me. I love folktales set in space. And if you do too, then I have a bonus story for you. Epic Explorers can find that story by going down this stories page on our website. But if you're not an Epic Explorer yet, go to fablespodcast.co.uk to find out how to become one. And while you're there, you'll also be able to try our epic challenge. Send some creativity to us, and you never know, you might get a personalized video from us right back at you. Right now, though, it only remains for me to say cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon. So, cheerio, and I hope to hear your story soon.